Hello, my name is Aiden, and this is Rover Sim. Over the winter reading break, I began working on a small autonomous rover. The goal was to design a rover which could navigate my basement, avoiding obstacles and doing so fully autonomously. A major issue I kept running into was while testing my algorithms. The process of having to manually reset a physical system, flash my code updates, and clear a space made iteration very difficult. What I needed was a tool to simulate the rover so I could iterate quickly from my laptop. And so thus, Rover Sim was born. I can run different scenarios and view their progress live with the library called Pygame. If I don't care for the live view or I don't have Pygame installed, then I've got a mode where I can run it, and I call it headless mode. It doesn't show me the path, it simulates faster than real time, but after that it shows me the result as a matplotlib plot. Now before I delve into my code, I want to talk about a Python feature I use quite a bit called data classes. So often when we have variables which are highly related with each other, I group them with a common name. And then I've got functions which also have to share that name when they operate on those variables. But those don't scale very well. What I would prefer to do is describe the structure of my data to Python. So in this case I have the at data class class wheel. And so that creates the data class called wheel. And then I say there's two fields on it. There's a field called radius which is a float and a field w or omega which is also float and I initialize it to zero. And the idea is I can describe a wheel to Python and then I can instantiate it. So I create a left and right wheel, each with a 20 centimeter radius. And then I can use a familiar dot syntax to view those fields or set them. And then I can also associate functions with data classes like the velocity one here. It takes this special self parameter and that's the data class itself with all its fields we can access. And then it's called using the dot syntax again. That's data classes. Very useful. I use them a lot. Now, the first step in development is to build a simulation. We start by describing the rover using a little bit of NGFIS 131 knowledge. Uh, you should be able to do this analysis on your own, but it's basically we got wheels that we assume don't slip, and there's a rigid body, and we can do some of the kinematics. And then the important step is converting all that math into code. And so here I have a data class describing my vehicle, and all its associated fields, so numbers, right? And then the simulate function is run repeatedly. It computes a rhyme and sum over some time step delta time, which we can then use to figure out the rover's position and orientation over time. And then adding some Pygame code to display the vehicle, we get a fully functional simulator. So here's me controlling the vehicle manually with my keyboard and mouse, uh, just to demonstrate that the physical simulation is actually working. Now to really get into the meat, of the whole project are autonomous algorithms. Now, here's one, it's called wall following, and the idea is rover follows a wall. We have these ultrasonic sensors, which are the orange lines, A and B, and they give us a distance between the sensor, so at A, to the wall. And using a bit of geometry, we can find out the distance between the car and the wall, and more importantly, like, are we heading away from the wall or towards the wall? Then we can plug this into what's called a PID controller. The PID controller says we want to be a fixed distance from the wall, but we're not quite there. And we've got a function E of t, which is at error. And so what we can do is we apply a correction factor U of t based off of how that error function is changing, its current value, uh, what it's been historically. And we tune this using a kp, ki, and kd value. And these are just, I guess, in check. Uh, there's a whole art to tuning at your PID controller. And then I can apply that correction factor to change the difference between my left and right wheel angular velocities. Now I can convert this to code pretty easily, as you see on the left there, and maybe just pause and take a look. Uh, it's not too fancy. And then the result is a fairly stable model, which can follow the wall using only readings from some ultrasonic sensors. Now finally, of course, we combine all these in a unified tool, just like I showed you at the beginning. So I won't delve too deep into it, because we've already seen it, and Truth be told, the code is very similar to what we did in our labs anyways. But I would encourage you still to take a look through the code. I've sprinkled comments all over the place, so hopefully it's approachable. And I built quite a few things which I don't have time to talk about in this video. Notable items being that I've got a concurrency framework, which lets me run multiple functions at the same time, and a UI toolkit, which I use to build all these text interfaces. Now, I think they're pretty cool, but uh, it's just me. Uh, feel free to send any questions you have over email, though. I'm always up to talk code or whatever. Uh, good luck on your finals, everyone, and enjoy your summer.